Uh, my Lord, for the record and uh, for the interest of those who are transcribing the proceedings, my name is Elisha Ongoya. I appear for the first petitioner applicant, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. My Lord, I stand here to converse the Deputy President's application dated 18th October 2024, which in the main six that you halt implementation or put appropriately further implementation of the resolution of the Senate made on 17th October 2024. Allow me to then also put on record that we have some written submissions that were filed, and I think it's good practice to draw the court's attention to them so that the record confirms that they are part of the record. We had filed some written submissions on 22nd October 2024. We adopt and reiterate the contents of those submissions. When we retire, we urge you to have a look at them. But we also filed some additional written submissions on 28th October 2024. Both of them are entitled petitioners submissions on the application dated 18th October 2024. Let me move into the substance of what I want this court to consider this morning. And I want to make some overall observations, my lords and my lady. I prefer to look at this case in this court as an opportunity for our constitutional order. Whereas I know that there may be Kenyans out there interested in this matter, looking at this moment as a challenge to our democracy and a challenge to our constitutional order, I bear a message of hope. I want us to look at these proceedings as an opportunity for our constitutional order. So the challenge for me, my lords and my lady, is how we shall seize and use this opportunity. I look at it as an opportunity for our governance institutions. My lords will remember the words of the late Justice Chunlal Magwanda's Madan in that famous case of Gidunguri versus Republic, where he urged Gidunguri to run unto the hills, face east, and thank his gods that Kenya is a country under the Constitution. I see this as another opportunity. I beseech this court to urge His Excellency Rigade Gashagwa to run to the top of Mount Kenya, face east, and tell the world that Kenya is a country under the Constitution through the opportunity presented by this case. I see this case as an opportunity for the judiciary. And I'll be elaborating on this point in a short while because of the behavior of other organs of government in the recent past. So I see this as an opportunity for the judiciary. I see this case as an opportunity for righting wrongs and not for perpetuating wrongs. I have had the privilege of participating in these proceedings from the National Assembly, through the Senate, through this court. I mean, and I thank God and thank my client for that, because out of 50 million Kenyans, I have done nothing special to deserve this opportunity, but this somehow fate has conspired to give me an opportunity to participate and witness these events from the front benches. What this case has taught me is 
just how perilous we stand as a country if we depend on our legislative and executive institutions and very recently our constitutional commissions. Our remaining beacon of hope, my lords and my lady, is this judiciary. I have one question for you, my lords, my ladies. Will you drop the ball or will you hold the ball to the finish line? A brief history of what you will find in our amended petition <clears throat> by way of paraphrasing is that on 18th October 2024, this country witnessed an unprecedented hurry by our executive, legislative organs, and our constitutional commissions to beat our constitutional order. I will demonstrate this shortly. On that day, 18th October 2024, we witnessed an unprecedented hurry. In fact, I would have thought speaking for, for myself that our country has become super efficient. But I discovered that no, we were still waiting long to get our national IDs. We were still waiting long to get our passports. We were still queuing for long in our hospitals for health services. That this unprecedented hurry was for a specified pro project to beat our constitutional order. And why do I demonstrate this? A process for which the Constitution of Kenya prescribes 74 days at Article 149, Clause 1 of the Constitution was truncated and executed in less than six hours. Clearly, we may have varying definitions of the word hurry, but we can build consensus that this one is undisputedly unprecedented hurry. Why did the makers of our constitution prescribe 74 days maximum in Article 149, Clause 1? Different analysts may give it different interpretations. I beseech you to find whatever the scope of interpretations, the following will fit into them. Number one, it must have been to give the process optimum transparency. Number two, it must have been to give the process optimum accountability. Number three, it must have been to give the process procedural fairness. Because whereas we know that justice delayed is justice denied, we also know that justice hurried is justice miscarried. And finally, it must also have been to give public participation in the process under Article 149, Clause 1, some chance. Allow me to submit at that juncture from the very outset that the process undertaken by the President of the Republic of Kenya by the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, which was mentioned in the President's communique to Parliament, to the National Assembly, by the IEBC, that was also included in the President's communique to the National Assembly, and by the National Assembly itself, did not even pretend to have an iota of public participation. Even the pretense of public participation was now taken away. 
we will demonstrate to you that the process between 1st October and 17th October, the process between 1st October when a notice of motion was given in the National Assembly to 17th October when a resolution was taken by the Senate had pretenses, half-hearted pretenses of public participation. That will demonstrate. The process on 18th October, buoyed by any lack of checks, buoyed by the fact that any attempt at checking the institutions had not yielded fruit, now they became brazen. They now undertook a process on 18th October, now completely without any pretense of public participation. There is no single Kenyan who was given a chance to ever say what their take is on Honorable Kithure Kindiki, my law lecturer of yesteryears, and a fundamental scholar, my good uh, people. No Kenyan was given a chance to give any thought on whether or not he is suitable to be deputy president. No member of the public, no memoranda was received, no meeting was called anywhere for anyone to give any thoughts, no email address was given to be crushed by Kenyans as we now know Kenyans can do it. Completely no pretense at public participation. I'm emphasizing these points my lords and my lady to demonstrate the point I made earlier that we have now been taught how perilous it is for us to rely on our executive institutions and our legislative institutions and our constitutional commissions as defenders of our constitution. We are now left with only one institution, this judiciary. I don't know where that noise is from within here. Thank you. If they are doing renovations, they may be told that this is so important a day for renovations. We may defer them to another day. <laughs> and, and let's face it. Let's face it. The process of 18th October 2024 took six hours as a deliberate scheme to defeat each of the principles and values of good governance I have alluded to. Transparency, accountability, procedural fairness, and public participation. Who did these violations? We are also here to call people to account. Who did it? Between the time we left Senate around midnight, between the time Senate closed business around midnight of 17th October 2024, and the time we woke up to the presidential communique of 18th October 2024, in that night, the Bishop Oginde-led Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission is documented in the President's memorandum to have received, processed, and given a clearance to his to Honorable Kithure Kindiki that night. My lords, history is important, and I may not remind you why our constitution prescribes that our presidents be sworn in during the day. We were all adults, we know where that comes from. It's one of the most autochthonous provisions of our constitution. And therefore, when things happen in the night, we have reason to have our antennas high. Between the light time Senate rose on the night of 17th October 2024 and the time we woke up in the morning of 18th October 2024 to the President's communication to the National Assembly, we were told that the IEBC which we now know is not properly constituted, has no commissioners, had purportedly cleared Honorable Keture Kindiki in the night. 
I will not say much about KRA because I think KRA can work overnight and we will not complain. <laughs> but, but it was not memorandum. The other culprit was the president himself. The president of the Republic of Kenya undertook these clearances overnight and in the morning had a clear proofread memorandum. Exceptional efficiency. We celebrate that. <coughs> to Parliament. Then the National Assembly itself. Now this is curious. The National Assembly itself had called a sitting prior to the resolution of the Senate. The sitting was called prior to the resolution of the Senate. To sit on a day, ordinarily not a day of sitting of the National Assembly. To process a resolution of Senate it had anticipated the removal of a deputy president from office and processing clearance or approval of another deputy president. We sit here as judges, we sit here as court assistants, we sit here as advocates representing various parties. I don't know who among us, once we take away the clocks of the official roles we play, was proud as a Kenyan, observing these events as they happened. I, I don't know who among us was proud, now putting on the clock of citizenship to watch these events unfold at that pace. Fortunately for us, my lords, my ladies, we have a judiciary of Honorable Richard Mwongo that arrested this process in its tracks to give the Constitution a chance to roar. In the far corners of Kerogoya. <clears throat> Fortunately for us, we have the judiciary of Honorable Chacha Muita, his lordship, that arrested this process to give the Constitution a chance. Today, you sit and I stand before the judiciary of Honorable Ike Ogola, Honorable Esim Rima, and Honorable Dr. Frida Mugambi, that has been invited by the respondents to undo that chance that the Honorable Mwita and the Honorable Mwongo gave the Constitution.